The following video will describe the concept behind a reverse double four bar with a passive linkage. This is only a prototype to illustrate the concept. Let's start with a tower which could be attached to a drive base. The passive linkage is driven by a high strength sprocket which could be powered by a motor with another sprocket and chain linkage. The sprocket pivots on the tower. In an actual assembly, the axle of the sprocket would need a second point of contact to avoid cantilevering. The other end of the lower four bar pivots on the movable tower. The top four bar is mounted to a 60 tooth gear, which pivots on the movable tower. As with the sprocket, the gear's axle would need a second point of contact in an actual assemble. The other end of the top four bar would pivot near the top of the tower. The bottom bar of the reverse four bar is also mounted to a 60 tooth gear, but it is mounted using spacers to provide clearance so it can swing by the lower four bar. The gear pivots on the movable tower and also would need its drive shaft to have a second point of contact. The other end of the lower reverse four bar pivots on the end movable tower. This tower is where a manipulator for the game pieces could be attached. The top reverse four bar pivots on the movable tower and is separated from the tower with a spacer to provide clearance. The final pivot point of the top reverse four bar is on the end tower. This picture shows how the reverse four bar needs to have clearance in order to swing by the lower four bar. As the sprocket is turned clockwise, the lower four bar moves up. This causes the 60 tooth gear on the top four bar to turn clockwise and causes the 60 tooth gear on the bottom reverse four bar to turn counterclockwise and passively lifting the reverse four bar. Fully extended, the reverse four bar achieves a fairly linear motion and gains significant height without the second pivot point being powered by a motor.